Hello there everyone, welcome back to another video in this set review series for Set 3 Aces of the Cosmos Assemble. Thank you for joining me for another one of these, uh, and also thank you to Alberto, my uh, lower ape level supporter. Your support is very much appreciated. Uh, I'm not going to dick around, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to be reviewing the Wonderverse cards from Set 3 in this uh, video. If you enjoy this stuff and you want to hear my thoughts, subscribe to the channel, like the video, let me know what you think in the comments section down below, and join my Discord server. That's all the shilling out of the way, so let's just get cracking. So here we have uh, Masashi uh, Amanogawa. Um, this is an interesting card, it's very, very strong. So firstly, I think that uh, goes without saying Wonderverse has the pleasure of having some of the best legends in the game. Uh, it's, it's kind of a strictly better version of Captain OMG, um, like, you can argue not doing it on count as a downside. I would argue that you are an idiot for suggesting that. But uh, basically, it's popping on entry, and it's also got this bonus effect whereby, like, if you're about to lose and your opponent is also, like, about to lose, you can just, like, not lose, uh, which is obviously pretty cool. Um, and its stat line is very, very nice. Three strikers obviously stonks, and it's got good attributes. Um, you know, like, it's got very good attributes, actually. Now... Potential downsides here are basically really just the fact that you're competing for legend space against the likes of Scoob. It's a bit difficult to justify uh, for some decks to be playing this. Uh, generally speaking, this is kind of just like a very good generic card that happens to also be broken in a burn deck. So this is where you're seeing this guy most of the time. Um, otherwise, like a lot of decks are just kind of like, well, I could play this or I could play Scoob. Um, and, you know, Scoob is an extra counter, so it's really hard to justify this over Scoob, but, like, uh, in a vacuum, this card is very, very good, and definitely one of the best legends in the game, for sure. It's just, you know, Scoob exists. Uh, next, Cosmic Ifrit. So this is a card that I massively underrated uh, when I first saw it, and uh, I, I have to say that this is absolutely one of the best cards um, in in the set, in the sense that it, it is a contributing factor to why Burn as a deck is now able to work. Um, you can now play uh, 11 or 12 burn counters, uh, which is obviously very, very good. Now, uh, downsides of this card is uh, its TD is garbage. <laughs> um, like, it's it's not a good TD. Uh, it's basically rarely ever going to matter that you've done two damage to uh, everything. It only matters against Scoob. And, like, there's enough ways to get around Scoob uh, at this point in the game. But, you know, okay, cool. Uh, obviously, in a drive deck, this is nuts. Right, because this is now a counter that deals the damage, or on drive it deals two damage. So in a drive deck, this is absolutely cracked. Though of course, in a drive deck, you have a level limit. So you know, realistically, this is like a card you're only going to be able to fit into like a berserker. Um, it's got a very interesting set of uh, um, attributes there, but I think uh, essentially it's just one of those things where like it has its place uh, and is really really good in those decks. But uh, it's, I mean, it's yeah, its generic utility is not outstanding but it's not bad like it's really strong in drive decks but this level holds it back there it's uh you know broken in trickster that's like where it, like in in trickster burn decks that's like basically what, uh, centered around it uh, and it's as a generic like uh de as a generic tool in hand decks it's terrible so on balance i say a pretty good card you know definitely very nice uh, a card with a bit more generic utility uh, is Sp Starship Captain Air. This is a really good card. So uh, it's Future Folk, uh, which is relevant for the four Futuristic Four, Four Future Men, whatever that card is. Uh, counter is just, you know, dealing five damage to something um, that uses its OD and its CD and OD are the same thing. So obviously, uh, yeah, like this is having extra removal, but uh, it also does that on entry and you can DR3 to just play an event. Uh, the decks that are going to best take advantage of this are ones that are already playing a large number of Wonderverse events. So again, that's typically going to be your drive decks um, that are playing like Schrodinger's Cat or like a deck based around that. Because obviously if you can play like a Schrodinger's Cat and then like play an Ed and DR3 and then play like another Schrodinger's Cat, that is so broken. Um, but like, yeah, this card is solid. Uh, it's really solid. It's an, it, it, it's a, it's a more combo-y sort of card and it's uh, as good as dealing five damage or something is. There are cards that exist that can mitigate that and, you know, five damage to one thing is also like it's not always amazing but it is strong uh i don't get I, i'm not trying to downplay how good this card is i'm just sort of going like it's obvious that it's very strong uh, i'm just trying to present some of the more like countery points to that uh but like yeah i would say another like wonderverse just ate quite well with their with their srs both of these are really really solid uh, and i think you'd be like happy to kind of play either um next is space lancelot of cosmo camel another really strong card so we've got a five four one 
Uh, when it's special summoned from your deck, you also get to use the DD and OD, and you get a top charge, and it's a charge shielded double attacker. So why is that uh, bit of text relevant? Well, it's a warrior, which means you can Genesis summon this. So there are decks built around Genesis summoning this guy out, and as a 5 4 one, uh, he's really good. Um, unfortunately, the, the, the argument is sort of like, okay, well, I could go into this, uh, or I could go into Aras, who, yes, does not have charge shield, and yes, has, like, slightly worse stats, However, Aras also stops all effect damage and like is a very broken combo with things like Lucifer. So it's a bit harder to justify this in a sort of Genesis summon context because then you also have to be playing pink. Uh, however, <laughs> however, uh, the important thing to keep in mind is that uh, this is a really, really strong card in drive decks. Uh, you play this like this is a five attack, double attacker with charge shield in a drive deck that's already playing pink. That's super good. Um, and this is like a versatile card, right? Like, you, like you're like you always getting that ability. I think the special summon from deck is sort of just like a bonus that you don't really care too much about. Um, you're really here for the for the TD and OD. Um, and like, yeah, I think it's just an objectively quite a strong card. Uh, really good in robotic-based decks as well. Because uh, obviously, like, you know, you're, you're getting that. Um, if you're getting an effect that stacks something on top, uh, such as through emergency recombination, it's obviously even better. Uh, yeah, like a super, super good card. Next, we got Dash Jordan. I think this is a card that's being underrated right now. I think this is one of the best cards in, in Wonderverse. I think like this is like super strong. So uh, the counter is Giant Killing, and that's quite a valuable counter uh, this stage in the game. It's really good against Darkness. It's really good against Genesis Summon. It's really good against uh, Lucy Aras because you're dealing with the Aras, and like dealing with the Aras is very, very valuable. Um, so like it's quite it's quite a versatile uh, like there's a lot of level threes running around the format there's a lot of level fours but there's also a lot of level three it's obviously really good against drive decks dealing with room again that sort of stuff so it's a good counter uh, but then uh, it also has a TD and OD to deal three damage or something now usually three damage is kind of whatever but when you combine that with the fact that when you're on low health this becomes a sentinel summoner for one this card suddenly becomes really really strong because three HP is oftentimes just enough to be really annoying like there are you know these two attack two strike units that are running around right now so this will block one of those it, alternatively it'll also just kill one of those uh so this is kind of like a double defender right because if your opponent has like something some weenie thing but with like a big strike um that you just go okay well i'm gonna play my dash jordan i'm gonna pop your thing and then you're gonna have to waste your ruler attack going into my dash jordan that's really good uh, it's also well attributed, you know, it's a warrior, so relevance for Genesis Summoning does exist if you ever happen to go down that way, but, you know, like, realistically, it is a future folk, uh, and it's also a superhero, so, you know, wherever that superhero uh, synergies do become relevant, but, like, yeah, it's a future folk, uh, which is obviously very good, for, again, for future men, which is a really powerful card. So, uh, yeah, on balance, I think this is, like, a really strong card, um, and I think it's being slept on a bit. Obviously, like, taking up counter space sucks. Um, but when your deck can afford it, I think this is a really, really good counter and just an overall really good card in hand decks. Uh, in drive decks, this card's kind of bad. Because, uh, I mean, as good as the counter is, like, I mean, a big part of why this is useful is Sentinel Summoning. Next, we've got Schrodinger, Spirit of the Singularity. And this is probably the worst four star for one of us. So uh, the counter uses the TD or the OD, and that's relevant because they do two different things. So the TD pops a set, and the OD swaps, uh, basically puts something from your grave into damage and you heal one. Uh, bear in mind, if you do this when you are at one life, you will die, uh, so don't do that then. Uh, and you can also discount DR1 to just play it for free. So obviously that's a lot of good things. Uh, and it's a 0-5-0, zero zero, so it's a big, beefy boy in the defensive. What else does it do? Well, once per turn, until the end of the turn, this and all units in your damage zone gain one attribute of your choice. And it cannot be chosen by your opponent's events or abilities. So this is, like, a very cool card. Uh, and I definitely think that uh, in terms of, like, a pink, uh, yellow Genesis Summon list, like, all these, like, cards I've basically just been talking about, like, they all work together very well um, to potentially do some silly things. For example, giving your whole damage zone, Warrior, and then Genesis Summoning out an Aras will let you Genesis Summon any one of your level 1s out of that, um, because they'll all be Warriors. Uh, I, I will say, I think that um, the another use for this is going to be that sort of specific DR, right, where you have to DR uh, specific attributes, and this is always going to let that be online. Um, the downside, though, is the TD and OD isn't particularly good. Uh, we're in a format where there is not much setting at all going on. Uh, if this said set or feel, uh, I'd be like, this is a little better, but even then. Uh, so, like, the, the counter is, like, not very good, and that is kind of a death sentence in and of itself. Uh, I think basically, uh, in terms of generic utility, this card is, like, pretty bad, but it does have a place, like, there are decks that want to play this, like Owl, for example, uh, where it's really, really good, um, and, like, in those situations, you definitely want to keep this in mind. Uh, I think it's, like, a powerful card, for sure, and you definitely want to, like, keep this in mind for deck building for certain types, but generically, it's pretty whatever. 
Next, we've got uh, Old Granny Tachyon. Okay, maybe this is maybe I'll, maybe this is the worst one. It seems good on paper, right? So this is a level one two one two. So level one with two strike. Uh, it's a supernatural future folk and Regan Leaf. So Regan Leaf, like keep that in mind. Future folk, keep that in mind. These are all relevant attributes, right? Uh, and then instant action. When this is being attacked by an enemy ruler or unit, you may place this in another allied attack or defense zone that's empty. Right, so basically, if you put this somewhere, your opponent cannot kill it by attack. As long as you have a zone that's open, it'll always dodge. Now, what's the downside here? Well, if your opponent sees it on the side, they go, okay, I'm going face, because there's no sense attacking the side. So uh, basically, you get to use this maybe as a defender once, right? Um, which is fine. Uh, but like, okay, uh, is that really worth it? Uh, I, I think, like, the nice thing is, like, it's a unit you will always be able to keep around, right? Your opponent, uh, well, either your opponent's going to remove it by effect or they're just not going to bother, um, which is obviously quite good. But uh, how good is that in the current format? Not super good. I think this is just struggling to find a place right now, and I'm not entirely sure what decks would really want to play this. Um, like, as good as it is, as, like, a two-strike level one that, like, becomes a defender, like, functionally, this is just a two-strike level one that has defender. Um... And that's not super strong. I, I, I think if this was a level zero, I would be like, this is kind of nuts because it's a level zero with all these abilities. Like, that's really good. But at level one, I just think it's difficult to kind of find a home. Uh, and, you know, I, I think it's a card I'll keep in mind in my deck building, but it's nothing like super special. Suppressive Mage. Here's a card that like reads like it should be broken, but is seeing basically zero play right now. This is a 5-4-2 uh, guild and future folk. Uh, standard action, you can DR3 to choose one card in your opponent's damage zone and flip it face down. You're basically never, ever, ever going to use that unless it, like, just so happens to work out, like, perfectly. It's such a rare thing with that matter. The main thing is no shenanigans allowed. All players cannot use OD and TD. This is shockingly not that relevant. Um, there are actually not that many OD and TD abilities that you would, like, be super, like, you know, like... So, against some decks, this is going to be nuts, right? Like, if you go up against basically any drive deck, yes, this is going to be insanely strong. Uh, I would counter with what drive decks are you going up against. Well, maybe Highlander, maybe Berserker. That's kind of it, right? Uh, no one's playing Apprentice, and basically no one's playing Dreadnought. Like, those ex decks exist, but Dreadnought... Okay, Dreadnought too, right? So if you're going up against a drive deck, fine, this is broken. Uh, but you're going up against a drive deck... Well, probably wasn't going to be that difficult for you to win anyway. I think it's one of those things where if, like, drive decks started becoming very prevalent in the meta, you would probably just main deck this card, uh, and then drive decks would disappear from the meta, and then you'd remove it, right? Uh, so, yes, okay, it's good against drive decks. How good is this against hand decks? Well, we've kind of moved away from all, like, hand things being TD. A lot of them are just on entry when this card enters the field. Um, and additionally, it's 4 HP, right? So, you sure, you can shut this down for, like, a turn, but, like, okay, your opponent's going to be like, fine, I'll just kill it, and then you're probably not going to be able to get it back. So you might have to invest resources into protecting this guy. Uh, overall, I don't think it's like the the sort of silver bullet kind of thing that it sort of reads as. Um, it's a card where, like, again, you want to keep it in mind in your deck building whenever you're using Wonderverse, like, in an instance where these abilities become very prevalent. And that's the thing. Like, right now, this card's not great. But at any point in the future, it could be silly if, like, these decks take over that are basically all OD or TD. Uh, and at that point, like, this card becomes really good. So that's sort of my opinion on it not great right now but could become broken very feasibly next we've got bio core uh bio core capo the blah, blah, blah. um okay <laughs> basically this card is really strong tldr this card is really strong it does not have the support to make it really strong right now uh and that's like the main thing it's missing once we get more of these concealment and force concealment cards that are incredibly strong uh this is going to be potentially like a whole thing uh, and I don't know when that's going to happen. It might happen in set four. It might take till set five, till set six. Uh, but when it eventually happens, this is going to be really strong. As I say, until then, it's pretty, pretty bad. And seeing basically zero play. Next, we've got Star a Space Dullahan Star Rider. So this is a weird card. Uh, attributes out of the arse. Uh, four, four, zero. So not bad stats. Uh, now, if you enhance it, you do get to top check and potentially drive it. So drive something. And it will gain one strike if it has a charge. But it doesn't have, like, double attack. It doesn't have any, like, other things. It doesn't even have charge shield. So, like, how good is this card, really? I think it's one of those ones where, like, you'd probably play it. I think So you'll play this in a Space Peep Future Folk deck. That deck exists. You'll play this in that. And you'll basically play it nowhere else. Maybe Highlander. Just because it's a level zero with good stats, right? Like, you can use four attack to hit over stuff. You can use four HP to, like, defend. Uh, other than that, this card is suck. This card is just, like, bad. But in that Space Peep Supernatural deck, probably quite good. Next, 
You've got High Powered Phaser. This is a card that is just not good. Uh, yeah, like, okay, so you can DR3 to play this for free or return a card. Okay, fine, so you're playing it for free. What are you doing? Three damage? <sighs> if this, like, you know, basically the problem, right, is if you're ever contemplating playing this card, there is a good chance you're also playing Atlas in your deck. And if you're also playing Atlas in your deck, why are you even contemplating playing this card? Embrace of Aeons exists, right? Um, and I think that's my problem with it, basically. Uh, it's just, it just, it just doesn't do enough. It feels quite bad. I, I just, I just don't think it's very good. I just don't think it's very good. Next, we got Biocore Predator Bear. So this is one of the, uh, one of the Biocore cards, uh, obviously. Uh, four three one stat line is fine. Um, and when if your opponent plays an event of level zero or less, you may special summon from set zone and negate that event. Essentially, this would have been nuts in like set one or set two. Uh, at this point, we have like very much moved away from these like uh, level zero events um, that are like really prevalent. However, if at any point we move back towards level zero events that are really prevalent, this card will become really good. So it's a complete meta call. Uh, how good this card is is just gonna depend on like the prevalence of level zero events in the point. Next, we got Biocore Monkey Natives, and this is a monkey. This is a, a better card in general. This is a 5-3-1, so 5 attack is obviously really good, like it's a good stat line. Uh, and then, when you're directly attacked, you can special summon it from the attack zone, your opponent's ruler loses a strike, and you can pop an enemy field, right? So it's doing a lot of things. Um, obviously, reducing something by 1 damage is, not like, nothing special. However, uh, it does come out for free. It is a good unit. Uh, typically, your opponent's going to be attacking with their ruler last anyway, so, like, it's probably going to be safe. Uh, so, on balance, I think this is, like, quite good, but again, it's just going to be one of those things that's so meta-dependent. Um, and, you know, I would argue if I'm, like, if I'm not gaining some synergy by, like, specifically playing this card, why would I not just play Shields up, All right? Next, we've got Adriano Showdown, Adriano versus Shadowhand. So, this is essentially... To cut the bullshit, if you're playing the deck that is specifically built around Space Peeps and Future Folk, this card is going to be a four of. If you are not, this card is worthless. It's a martial skill, it does not matter. Next, we got the two parts. Oh my god, right. I think, I, I feel like I made a whole video on why this card is nuts, but okay. TLDR, if your deck can play generic counters like this, for example, Tricks to Burn plays this at three to four, for example. Uh, this card is ridiculous. It is a counter that draws. That's good. And I am telling you, it like banishing counters is broken. If you do not think this card is good, try it out for yourself. I don't want to hear any bullshit about oh, the RNG. Oh. Shut up. This card is stupid. Uh, yeah, okay. Like I, I will say, like the draw two, you, you, I've got it off once in maybe like 50 to 100 games. It, it's never happening, right? But the removing top five, like, I'm telling you, if you ever hit, like, if you hit, like, three or four counters, like, that's, that's nuts. That's it. That's just it. Um, yeah. This card is really, really, really strong. Do not sleep on this card. Next, we got Maxwell's Demon. So this is a really cool card in theory that's quite bad. Uh, so, like, the problem is it's a named once per turn. So... Like, yes, okay, all your abilities that steal, like, a level 2 or less, or, like, a level 1 or less, or do something, like, whatever. Like, okay, there's now a target, like, a level higher, but there's one problem. Like, one, there's level 4s in the game, right? So, like, yes, okay, so the one advantage, right, is this this card will let your giant killings hit level 4s. Cool, um, that's fine. And, yes, it does have, like, utility as the instant action, right, to reduce damage dealt to you by 1. So, that exists, don't get me wrong. But, like, you have to build a whole deck around this card. And there is just not the support right now for that deck to be good. So currently this card is just bad. Like, don't bother. Uh, next, we've got uh, Monkeynator Sirloin. Okay, so, I, sorry, Monkeynator Minotaur Minotaur. Uh, I'm not going to go into, like, great depth on this archetype. I'm just going to say, like, it works quite well. It's not bad. Um, like, it's, if you play the deck, it's essential. Like, right, you got to build this whole deck and the deck is fine. Uh, it's a little janky, you can build like the Genesis Summoning sort of thing, it's, it's, it's sort of whatever. Um, but like, it, it exists. Uh, you know, it's an option. Um, so it's like this guy, and then it's uh, and then it's Chuck as well, and then it's the level 1 uh, as well, which is all the way over here, Death Prado Shang. So like these these guys, basically. Um, they're, they're, they're all, they're fine, right? They all work together. Okay, next we've got what, Weird Ship Black Ant Lion. So, uh, this is a I just a unit that I don't understand. Um, like, okay, so you take damage, you can move it into defensive, fine. 
Um, you know, in that sense, this is just a strictly worse version of old age tachyon because you can do that whenever. Um, and then also when it's attacked, you can pop a level one or less, but your opponent's just gonna not attack with a level one or less. So like, this card just sucks. <laughs> it's just not good. Uh, next, we have got, obviously I understand like this can be made a level two with Maxwell's Demon and then like, okay, cool. But then they attack with their ruler because only wizard would not be able to kill this with their ruler attack. So I'm just like, yeah, it's just stupid. Uh, next we got Space Pegasus Hengroen. <laughs> okay, so the DR7's a meme. Uh, however, I mean, if you're building around this card, you're gonna have that DR available. Uh, if your opponent lets this hit, frankly, <laughs> If your opponent lets us hit, frankly, you deserve to get it off. Uh, it's such a hilarious card. Like, it, because it, it's just not, like, it's not good, right? Like, it's DR7 on hit to special summon something. Like, okay, cool, you can get out, like, a, a Goldizer or a Grand Mesa. Like, cool. If your opponent lets that happen, there is something wrong with them. This is a high priority, like, do something about it, right? Um, like, do not let this hit. If it hits, though, what can you do, right? Uh, so, like, yeah, this is very much, like, a meme card for, like, Highlander and, like, for the specific, like, you can play this in a robotic if you wanted to, um, if you're playing, like, a few copies of those cards, but, like, yeah, it's, it's kind of a meme card. It's a cool card, though, like, it's definitely, like, fun. It's just a bit of a meme. Uh, Weird Ship BFD, this card's, uh, bad. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, like, you could play this, it's another burn counter, potentially, uh, but it's, like, RNG-based. Um, and, like, then you have the thing where, like, if it deals damage, you can also RNG base it to potentially deal two. So, I mean, you can play this in burn. Uh, I think, like, the reason it hasn't been, uh, played in burn until now is just because of that RNG, but I think you totally could. Uh, like, yeah, it's just sort of meh. Um, maybe it's cracked in burn. Maybe, uh, we gotta, we gotta try this out a little bit more. Um, but, like, the RNG just, like, massively turns me off from it. Uh, however, in RPS Maniac, this card is a lot better. But, you know, I mean, 50% of the time, uh, <laughs> you know, it burn one, 50% of the time, burn two. If you burn less this hit, that's going to be hilarious when it happens. So, I think this card's maybe a little bit better than it seems. It obviously has Breakthrough as well. Uh, then we've got Predator Shark, so the final one of the bio core. So, 331 stat line, whatever. Uh, and when your opponent uses an OD or TD on a unit of level one or less, you can negate special summon. I've been over OD and TD. Uh, essentially, like, if that becomes a prevalent part in the meta, this will be good. Until then, it's just pretty bad. It's a shark, though, so that's worth mentioning for set four. Uh, Star Kraken. This is uh, a very niche card. So, uh, counter is using the OD. Uh, OD, you may choose two space peeps in your graveyard and put them into your damage. Then, choose two cards in your damage and put them into the graveyard. So, um, this is very much for specifically that sort of space peeps deck when you're subbing things in and out, when you want to like take out your DR thing. Like the synergy is really obvious in that particular deck, but you have to be playing that particular deck for this to be any good. Um, if, if you're not, it's it's bad, right? Like, so this is good in that one particular deck, otherwise it sucks. Uh, and that sort of, you know, like Schrodinger's Cat, Space BB sort of, ooh, uh, kind of thing. Then we've got Space Doppelganger. Um, this card sucks, this card sucks. Like you're never, you never want to do anything that's relying on what your opponent's doing. Uh, next, I mean, okay, so I will say, like, this would have been good back in set one, uh, because that was, like, a very stat-based game, and at that point this would have been nuts, because you go, oh, I get my opponent's big thing for free. Uh, but right now, like, you know, it's, it's just not very good. Um, next, we've got Realize. Uh, you special summon a level zero or less from your damage zone. Um, but, like, I can see this potentially being good, in a deck, again, built around it, but, you know, you're building around playing this card that, like, yeah, it heals, but, like, so, you know, like, okay, not, not very good, in my opinion. And finally, Black Hole Feel Engaged. So, uh, this has Giant Killing, and, uh, next time an enemy unit is destroyed and plays the graveyard, you can put it into the owner's damage zone instead. So, uh, again, this is another, like, cool option, uh, dealing that damage, right, like, uh, and you, and your opponent's never gonna see this coming, because, like, it doesn't really see play, uh, and obviously, you know, like, that can be scary if suddenly your opponent just gets killed when they weren't expecting it, like, oh, I'm playing my defender, you go, okay, um, Black Hole Engaged, uh, they're gonna shit themselves. Uh, but yeah, like, kind of more of a meme -y card. I don't think it's super good at the moment, but it might, it might, it might be good. It might, it might be good. It might see play in the future, but we'll just have to wait and see. But there we go. That is it for this set review. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did like it, uh, let me know what you think, as I said. Uh, but yeah, overall impressions, I think Wonderverse uh, is looking very good in this set. Wonderverse got really good stuff. 
Uh, I think, yeah, no, A Secret to Nobody, Wonderverse is like... Histo Actually, this is probably the worst Wonderverse has ever been, because uh, it was always the best faction by far in set one and set two. Uh, now it's just, like, pretty good. Um, but, like, that's absolutely not to knock it whatsoever. There's a lot of really strong cards in here. Uh, although they're typically in sort of like the higher end and a bit more niche, I think a lot of a lot less like really generically strong cards. Uh, but there we go. That's it. Hope you guys enjoy this, and I'll see you guys in the next set review. Uh, so I'll see you then.